Another day in Westminster and another political distraction. The Tories are once again saying that they are bringing back the British Bill of Rights as a proposal, even though it was the same Tories who introduced it, brought it, took it away, and now they're bringing it back again, saying, you should trust us. It's very, very hard to keep up, ladies and gentlemen, on what's going on in Westminster. Every 10 minutes, we change prime ministers. Every 15 minutes, we change policies, key essential policies. Their budget is exactly the opposite of what we just had a month ago. Now, what we're dealing with here is because the, the, the border crisis, the illegal migration crisis, is finally getting some media attention. Genuinely speaking, if you look at over the last two, three years. You think that they've been talking about it for the past few months. No, 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 it's genuinely, even now, whatever, even now, the mainstream media are not really on top of it, but they've been forced to talk about some of the scandals happening because of illegal migration, because there have been so many bad incidents around the country. So now, Dominic Raab is back, obviously, in government, and he's in charge of this nonsense that, you know, okay, well, let's, find the, let's, let's find a legal way to sort this out. The thing is, of course, there are legal ways to sort this out, but they're bringing back the British Bill of Rights, which I was very excited about you know, at the time, whatever it was a couple of years ago, a few years ago, when Boris Johnson's government announced it. Then they took it away, and now he's come to say that it will, be, it will put an end to the mission creep of continuously expanding human rights laws and re-establish proper democratic oversight from Parliament. The Bill of Rights is a vital reform that will strengthen our freedoms, help protect the public, and of, yeah, yeah, we get it. I mean, that's the whole point. I, I get the concept. No problem with the concept. I'm in favor. But the problem is I can't trust you guys. You could either take it away next week again. You could either just not do it, or that's the thing. It could just be a political distraction. Because right now, you guys are under pressure in government because there are so, like, there's a lot of demand for sorting out the illegal migration crisis. You need a new scapegoat. There are all these scapegoats and legitimate scapegoats. When you look at the, the French government, when you look at the left-wing lawyers, when you look at the actual uh, people smugglers, sure. But maybe you could also have some sort of responsibility. Maybe it's time to go and follow what the other European countries do, uh, are doing when it comes to their laws. Because it's not about people illegally entering the country. It's about what you do afterwards. You guys process the applications and 76% of those applications are being approved even though you have no idea who this person is because they get rid of their IDs and passports on the in, in English channel, on the boats. We've seen videos. They, they get rid of them. So we don't know what the person's real name is, where they're actually from. Yet somehow, without properly vetting them, you are approving 76% of these cases. So it's not really about the fact that there's no border. It's the fact that the Home Office are basically saying yes to everybody. So don't just blame the human rights laws. Don't just blame the left-wing lawyers, which again, there's a good point to, made, to be made. But at the same time, the government must take responsibility. This, all this, is just distractions. That's all it is. Nothing's getting done. We're still waiting. And if they actually allow someone like Suella Bravman as Home Secretary to do her job, maybe we might see some difference. So far, not so good. Let's take a, take a quick break. I'm going to come back in half an hour. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.